Hi everybody, this is Maria and today I'm confused but excited about DIY. So both Max and I are very passionate about making and creating. So we're gonna let you into our journey first with myself and then we're gonna have a little video from Max coming up. Here's a short preview. I've attached the leg. For me, DIY is about just the pleasure you get from making something for yourself. It doesn't have to be picture perfect, magazine ready, lakini as long as you like it, it's awesome. It's also a great couples activity. It's a great activity for these quarantine times. If there's a second lockdown, you know you'll have time in your hands. You know you wasted <laughs> the first lockdown. <laughs> Let's be real. We all thought we we're gonna work out. We all thought we we're gonna like study. We we're all gonna no, you wasted it. So this time, don't waste your second lockdown. Just pick up these materials and do some DIY. I'm gonna show you how to make three amazing things with DIY materials you can find locally. So and I mean very locally and unexpected. So one is going to be a mop head. I picked up this mop head for 150 bob from the local supermarket. The second is gonna be sisal rope. You can find this everywhere. And I just think it's so beautiful and we don't use it enough. Another one is <laughs> this plastic mirror. We all know these and they're always around. So I'm going to make something interesting with that. Um, and the last thing is baking powder. So Kawaida baking powder, you can find it from the store. So we're gonna make something beautiful and awesome. So stick around if you wanna uh, learn how to make these things. So our first project is going to be this decorative mirror using the sisal rope, the plastic mirror, and any sort of backing. I'm using just a piece of cardboard from a box, but you can use wood or anything stiff. So unfortunately, I broke my mirror, but it's okay because I only needed a small piece, so I'm using the smaller piece. I'm centering it in the backing and hot gluing it down, and then starting to hot glue the sisal rope in a pattern around the mirror in the middle. So me, I've done a arch shape. You can do a big circle or anything that you'd like. And as you can see, it's as easy as winding the sisal rope all around many, many times, making sure to make it as dense as you can until you've achieved the shape that you want. Um, beautiful and easy. So for the final touches, um, I'm just trimming off the excess sisal that's kind of sticking up out of the sides to make it um, a little bit neater um, then make sure as you're winding it you wind it very densely otherwise you can get some gaps where the cardboard can show through it's not such a problem if you're doing it on something beautiful like wood but if it's cardboard you don't want it to show through so make sure it's super dense then also clean up any hot glue that um, is visible especially in the center there near the mirror. Um, if there's any gaps, you can actually take just a small piece of the sisal rope and cut, you know, one inch or or less and just kind of stuff it in there and hot glue it to, to fill up any gaps that you might see. Otherwise, there you go. You've got a beautiful mirror for pretty cheap. By the way, if you're enjoying our content, we'd appreciate if you would subscribe. We've got lots more coming. All right, project number two. So remember that mop head that I showed you? We're gonna use it for uh, macrame. So this is a pretty affordable way to get macrame thread, which is ordinarily quite expensive and not so easily available, especially if you're a beginner like I am. So you're gonna just pull the threads from the mop head. Once you pull a few, then the others come out really easily from the plastic um, attachment. So as I mentioned, I am a beginner myself with macrame, but you can still make really awesome stuff using fairly simple tutorials. So this first project, I used a tutorial and it kind of comes out as a leaf. You have one central thread in the middle and then you take loops on either side and knot them as you can see so uh it's fairly straightforward all you have to do is fill the whole thing with um, the knotted loops kind of making the the bulk of the leaf on either side if that makes sense the you alternate kind of the position of the thread so that you get that nice alternating pattern on, down the spine 
of the leaf um, and there you go so once you kind of bend it into shape all you have to do is go ahead and unwind each of the threads so you can kind of get a fluffier um, look at the end of your project so this is what you end up with kind of finger comb it out i used like a a small comb but since this is not quite macrame thread it's not as easily combable but i think it's sufficient to comb it with the, using your fingers so then i trim it into that nice leaf shape that you see there and and that's it this was my first time doing this kind of project and i'm pretty happy with how it turned out i ended up um, kind of putting some fabric on a piece of cardboard and using that to mount my leaf and all three macrame projects you'll see at the end are from that one mop head i want to show you also how i dip dyed one of the projects using turmeric turmeric and water pretty simple um, and i got this lovely nice yellow color and you'll see it in the final reveal project number three so we're gonna use that baking powder that I mentioned along with some paints to paint some glass bottles. So this um, is pretty ordinary paint. Um, I used this plastic emulsion we had left over from painting the house, ordinary baking powder and acrylic paints. So the idea of the baking powder is that it's supposed to make the paint resemble uh, ceramic or terracotta. So other than just painting a glass bottle, which you can do and actually looks pretty good, um, it kind of gives it like uh, as if it was actually made like out of, you know, ceramics like pottery. Um, as you can see, it makes a color because unfortunately it, I was starting from white. I was unable to get that rich, deep red color, but I like this color. So I decided to stick with it. I put in about one teaspoon of baking powder and stirred it right in so you'll see the mixture actually begin to froth and that's because of the baking powder being activated by water and putting in um, lots of air bubbles and this thick mixture is what you paint with to make that terracotta ceramic pottery appearance here's a close-up you have to mix it real well so this is what it started out. I think mine was a little bit l too liquid. Um, and you'll see I go through a, <laughs> a few adventures in trying to, trying to do this project. This is what they look like um, after one coat. Mixed results. That one is pretty matte, um, but some of the others are very streaky. The paint is coming off. Um, this is me trying to do a second coat, but I think it's still too liquid. So I'd encourage you to make sure you're starting from um, a bit of a thick paint uh, to begin with. So, so the baking powder has not quite turned out how I wanted it to. So that's a little bit of a fail. So this is what the, they look like. It's very matte, but I wouldn't say it quite looks ceramic. And it's very streaky. So this orange one is a little bit more of the kind of rough ceramic texture. But as you can see, this is just one coat. It's not quite, um, it's not quite pleasing. So I'm going to have to do a take two. I'm going to switch up the formula and hopefully we'll get a better result. So here is take two. So this time I did not add any water at all to my paint. So it was fairly thick. And also it being the second coat, um, I'm not painting directly on the glass. I think it helped a lot and it really started to get that um, pottery look. You could immediately see the, the thickness and the texture of the paint. I also changed the color a little bit because the initial color was a little bit too light for my liking. Still not quite the beautiful terracotta, but this is a little bit uh, more realistic also threw in this random tray you can paint anything using this method and it looks pretty cute in my opinion when the paint has dried a little bit kidogo you can add a little bit more texture using a fairly dry brush just make sure you're careful not to strip the paint
So that is it you guys, who is ready for a final reveal? Let's take a look at our three projects. Those are three DIYs as simple as ABC using materials you can find anywhere. I hope you like them. Uh, if you like them, make sure you give this video a like. And if you want more of this kind of content where we make stuff and are very confused and very excited about everything that we come across, please don't forget to subscribe to our channel. You know, All right, until next time, cheers.